Hi everyone and welcome to episode two of Grass Cuttings, the podcast brought to you by the Grass Market Community Project. As the first episode, we've got lots of goodies in here, including an interview with the Reverend Dr. Richard Fraser, our founder and the chair of our board. Uh, We've also got an interview with our apprentices, a relatively new aspect of the Grass Market Community Project, as well as lots of other goodies. So um, enjoy the podcast and thank you also to the people that posted in on social media or emailed with um, feedback on the first episode, how much they enjoyed it, and also with some wonderful ideas for future episodes. Uh, Thank you very much for taking the time to write in. Much appreciated. So um, yeah, without further ado, enjoy uh, Grass Cutting. Hi everyone, welcome back to Grass Cuttings, uh, the second episode uh, of the Grass Market Community Projects podcast, where we will be sharing little snippets of life at the Grass Market Community Project and the people that make it possible and all the opportunities and activities that we provide. I'm looking forward to uh, introducing to you later in this episode to uh, Richard Fraser, founder of the project and our current chair of our board of trustees. But right now, I thought we'd take a little trip into the woodwork shop and meet uh, Tommy Steele and his amazing team. What we've got here is all the latest machines, uh, which are literally turning uh, church pews into beautiful high-end furniture. Tommy and the team are working hard, as you can probably hear. Tommy, have you got a minute? Tommy's going to tell us a little bit more about the Woodwork Project. Um, the difficulty I'll have is keeping him to a bit of time because Tommy's been around for a long time in the, in the, in the uh, Woodwork. So, Tommy, could you start by telling us just a little bit about how, what the Woodwork Shop does, how it works? Okay, this is the Grass Market Furniture Workshop. Um, we, what we do is we support people in the workshop. We make really high quality furniture. Um, But the most important thing we do in here is we work with vulnerable individuals and we improve their lives. Um, So we do that by making making furniture. Um, But the idea is, as you make the furniture, yep, you develop woodworking skills, but in turn, uh, you develop confidence and motivation and self-esteem and social skills. And ironically, we're trying to develop skills required when the guys leave the workshop. Yeah, so tell us a bit more about the, you say the vulnerable people. Tell us a bit more about the backgrounds and some of the people that come involved in the project. Because there might be some people listening to this podcast that are thinking of either referring someone or have or, or might want to refer themselves. So what kind of people are you supporting here? What kind of people are you getting involved in the project? So historically, the project was a project supporting homeless people. But then in 2010... Uh, the Grass Market Community Project was born and from then on we became a community project uh, pretty much supporting anyone because we we realised that pretty much everyone is vulnerable and got some sort of support needs. So in the workshop today we've got one of the sheriffs from the the local court and we've got people who are really struggling in life. So in here we take referrals from mental health groups, addictions groups, um, the people come through the criminal justice, justice system or we have people who come through the volunteer centre. So pretty much anyone. But, we, you know, we, we've, we've got people in here today. I'll have, I've got someone with autism. I'll have someone coming in later who's a stroke victim. So pretty, we, we support pretty much anyone. So you, that's, that's quite an amazing thing that you've got, like, a, um, a, a sheriff uh, uh, from the local court and, and you've also got people coming here with... Uh, very complex needs, people with uh, um, addiction issues, people who've um, maybe been uh, homeless or got like, serious mental illness or, or autism, things like that. Um, how do you make sure that it all works and that everyone gets on? I pride myself on having a great atmosphere in the workshop. You, you, you probably felt that when you, you came in. You know, everyone's working, you can hear in the background people are chatting. You know, we, we, I like to, you know, make people, you know, it needs to be a welcoming atmosphere in the workshop and I give people ownership of the workshop so you know it's their workshop it's not my workshop their workshop they come in they know what work they're going to be working in they they, they take pride in their work they sweep up at the end of the day they put the tools away they make sure everything's in order because it's their workshop they they get ownership of the workshop 
That's great, Tommy. I mean, over the next few uh, weeks and months with more of these podcasts, I'd like to get to know some of the people that come into the Woodwork Shop. And, and I know that it all makes such a, a massive contribution to both like, the lives of other people and, and, and also to the financial income of the, of the project through using the social enterprise model. So it's hard to single individuals out, but I wondered if you could tell us just a little bit more about this new scheme that we've uh, started uh, at the end of last summer, the apprenticeship scheme, because uh, I know that uh, some of the people that are funding and supporting that part of the program, the, the Hub uh, Southeast team and Inspiring Scotland, will be very interested, among others, in the apprenticeship scheme. So just, you just briefly tell, tell us a bit about that. We started this last summer where we, we, we got some funding to take on four apprentices uh, for the next three years in a trot. Now, they're pre-apprentices. We need to be clear about that. They're not apprenticeships. They're pre-apprentices. And what, what we're doing here is we've, we've got two in the workshop. Um, and these pre-apprentices, uh, what we're doing with them is we're developing wood, well, skills, workplace skills. So we're preparing them, hopefully, for an apprenticeship or at the very least to move on into like a proper job, if you want to call it that. So they're here for a year, and it's about giving them work experience, letting them get a feel for what the workplace is like. And these are these are young people who have come from, you know, a bit of a challenging background. You know, and the, the, we got the two lads in here from Edinburgh College. They were on a, a sort of access course at the college, and they were referred to us. And it's about it's about just. Teaching, you know, we can be, yeah, of course, we'll teach them woodworking skills and, and they're also doing some, you know, we've even got them doing SVQs in the workshops where, they, they, you know, they'll, they'll evidence that they've, they've, they've developed woodworking skills. But it's about, it's about just letting them know what it's like to be in the workplace, about being on time, about being punctual, about working hard, about working with others, teamwork, and just all the skills you need for in the workplace. And then hopefully we'll move them on in a positive way uh, later on in the year. That sounds great. Is it? I would really like, uh, and I'm sure our listeners would like to meet a couple of these guys, if, if, if that's okay. So could, we, could you maybe introduce us? I think uh, the, the one I'm, I'm just looking across the workshop here, and the first one I see, shying away from me there, is Lee Stephendale. So, Lee, would you come along here and give us a little interview? Thanks a lot, Tommy. I really appreciate it. Right. Thank you. Lee, hello. Hi. So, um, as I told you before, we're, we're producing this little podcast uh, for people just to tell them a bit more about the project and what goes on the project. And this uh, uh, episode is focusing uh, very much on the apprenticeship scheme and the wood workshop. So, I wonder if you could just start by just telling us when you started and what sort of things you've been up to since you've been here. Well, I've been here since July. Yeah. So, coming up a year nearly. Okay. Um, I've been doing all different stuff. I've been mostly woodwork, but I've been helping downstairs and like the catering area, yep. like helping Julia and stuff. Right, with well, like events and things. Aye, yeah, events yeah. and like heavy lifting, yeah, yeah. all different stuff. So it's, cheap, so it's cheaper than a gym? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good, like. It's yeah, good. excellent. Okay, so and um, what do you hope to get out of it? What are you hoping to achieve at the end of the... A the proper first full-time job. Right, okay. Yeah. And mere, like earn more confidence and... Yeah, yeah. Uh, just got a good job. Yeah, good. Tell us a bit about some of the things that you maybe find less easy or more challenging about being here. And then, um, is there any particular? No, nothing. You no. enjoy it all. I enjoy it all. That's good. And uh, um, what sort of what are you working on today? What what have you been working on today? I'm just working on sand and doing a bit of wood. I guess copy for a bench. Right. Okay. So I'm just sand and doing all different like different types of sandpaper to make it nice right. and smooth. So you're learning about techniques and woodwork Aye. techniques, and furniture making. Yeah. Yeah. Is joinery and furniture making something you'd be interested in take pursuing as a job? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Excellent. Mostly with woodwork though, because I just yeah. like woodwork. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, um, what were you doing just immediately before you came to uh, uh, on on board at the glass market? Well, I just finished my college course, then I started here. Right. So like in a matter of like two months, I started here after my college course. Yeah. So it's good. And then can you tell us a little bit about? Uh, what you would, what you might have been doing if you weren't here, like some of the challenges that you may be facing. If you, if you're okay to share, a yeah. couple of challenges that if, you may have been facing. If I wasn't here, I'd probably either be still at college, try doing our course, or I would be on the brew, right, <laughs> job yeah. centre. Right, and it's a bit of a depressing prospect Aye. for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay, thanks very much. I really appreciate that. Thanks Could you and maybe um, get Rui over? It, so yeah. I see that he's just there. So thanks a lot, Lee, for your Thank time. You. Appreciate it. Rui. How you doing? I'm good, thanks. Yeah. yeah. So I'm interviewing people for our, our, our Grass Cuttings podcast, little bits of uh, 
uh, background to the project and the stuff that we get involved in here. And uh, Tommy was just telling us about the apprenticeship scheme, yes. and we're just chatting to Lee. Could you start by telling us how, uh, how long you've been on this on the scheme and uh, what you've done in the time you've been here? Well, I started in August last year. Like I started after I finished college. Like we explained about what what job I want to get after college because I didn't know what to do because I I was on a um, um, I was on a like kind of course like at college like it was like a preparation for employment yeah, so yeah. and that's obviously trying to find skills for yeah. like a certain job you want to have after you leave but um, I didn't know what job I wanted to get until I my mum found out well she took me to the GCP right here yeah. and he t we introduced we got introduced by Tommy here and explained the 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 place and all around the building and ever since I worked here I've I've liked it I really liked working what here. What was it that first impressed you about the place when you met Tommy and you you first found out when your mum brought you down and you found out about the place? What was the first thing that struck you as like oh I'm gonna like it here? Well, the first thing I've got um I've got good well I've got practical skills that's yeah. what I used to have at school like yeah. I used to do like CDT yeah at, at and school. you enjoyed that yeah I enjoyed it very much um, yeah. and I think when I saw the woodwork that was performed here it just jumped into my mind and I felt like oh I want to have a good go at that so yeah, it's all yeah I really really wanted to have a go at it and see how it went and you know it's been going well for me ever since yeah. I worked here what tell us a bit more about what uh, uh, how it's affected you that being here you know what sort of things have you've learned about yourself or about you know working in a team or anything like that well, I've learned what it's like to be working in a, in a, in a proper environment, yeah. being by, like in a proper like a job, um, yeah. and also the, the staff who work here as well, they've, I've really liked them as well. They've been really helpful and supportive and yeah. uh, been working downstairs as well, not just up in the woodwork, but down in the cafe and yeah. also in other rooms to do like yeah. similar courses. So, yeah, it's been, been really good so far. Yeah. Because I was, I was uh, very privileged to hear you speak, uh, and I hope you don't mind me sharing with the listeners that uh, I heard you speak uh, um, very powerfully at our Strategy Day last year, uh -huh. and you talked about, um, you know, uh, how, what a difference it's made to your life being here and having the routine yeah. and, and being involved in the project. Um, do you want to say any more about that? Cause, uh, well, I, I felt, I, I wrote it down on the very day itself before it started, so... I mean, I chatted with Tommy and Susan about what words, what words would be appropriate to say in the strategy, and I just thought about before the what I did before I came here, yeah. and I just wrote it down on a little piece of paper. Yeah. And then when Tommy asked me to come up when it, when it started, I just stood up and read it out loud. Well, it was very courageous to stand in front of what about 50 people okay. and actually talk a bit about your life and stuff like that. You mentioned there what you in in, in that little speech you gave us in. Uh, uh, back in uh, November, you uh, uh, talked a bit about what you were doing beforehand. Would mm -hmm. you like to elaborate on that a bit more? Tell us a bit what sort of stuff you were doing or any challenges you were facing before you came here? Or Well, the challenges I faced were like working with um, other people who are um, roughly like the same age or older. Because yeah. like, yeah. the people at college usually were roughly about slightly younger than me. And yeah, also and you found that difficult older. at times. Yeah. A little bit difficult at times, yeah. but I got through it okay until... I found out um, that there was older people working in the in the place I wanted to go. So it's all. Is that one of the things you like here that we do have different ages and? Yeah, and I think it's. I think it's. I think it's. Um, it's quite you know um, fair that people of all ages should come here. Yeah. Like even like teens, or like or even kids, like to want to like you know come to visit this place so they can get an opportunity to work. Yeah. Good, good. Well, it's great having you in the team, Rory. I really Thank appreciate you. all your work, and I really like and appreciate the little bits of extras that you do, like painting skirting boards and uh, walls you. and stuff like that. And just seeing you about the project, it's Thank really you. a huge benefit to the project. And thanks Thank so you. much for sharing your, Thank your, you very much. your experiences today. Okay. Thanks. All right. Take Thank care. Cheers. Much. Thanks. Okay, so we're gonna uh, just meet a couple of other people in the woodwork shop. This is John. Hello. Can you tell us a bit about, because you're the, you're the pyrography master, aren't you? Tell, tell the listeners at home a little bit about what pyrography is. Well, it's to do with burning figures and letters on timber. Yeah. Uh, How do you do it? What do you, what do you use to do it with? Well, you use a, it's like a wee box machine. That, it's got numbers on it, and the higher the number, the higher the, the temperature. OK. Um, if you're doing small letters and stuff, you do, put it near enough to not. Yeah. And then big letters, I'd turn it up to full volume. 
right. and you cover a, a bigger distance. Excellent. And you tell us about some of the, the, the jobs you've done, pyrography jobs, because you've done some for some really oh, I've done prestigious a, clients, have you not? I've done a few, but I, I can't remember them all. But uh, <laughs> uh, what have I done? I've done a lot of work for nurseries and yeah. stuff like that, plaques and uh, Awards. Aw award plaques, yeah. uh, eco plaques. Yeah. Uh, I'm working on oval plaques at the moment. Who are they for? They're for uh, living simply, sustainably, and solidarity with the poor. All right, uh, KFOD. KFOD, yeah. 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 Excellent. I've done a few of them, I know. There's tw yeah. 20 of them today. Now I'm about 10 up to now. Right, excellent. And um, can, um, you've also um, made awards for the Edinburgh International Film Festival, yeah? What was that like? Well, I helped. I helped. I helped to do that. So there was a team of you. Ah, there was Diane and Natalia. Yeah. We all had a, a show each. But so the three of you are like the pyrography team. Aye, aye, yeah. aye. Oh, aye. And that's that. What you do pretty much every day. You're in the project. Yeah, yeah. How, how often are you in the project? You I'm, in, I'm in every day, Monday to Friday. Wow. You clearly enjoy it. And I've been here over a year and three months. Wow. You clearly enjoy it. I love it. What, what is it you love about it? I just love the atmosphere and the, the, the people and Tommy and all that. Kind of, yeah. They make you feel welcome. Yeah. Huh? As I said to Tommy at the beginning, when I stayed in Shanwick Place in the hostel, I used to kind of run up here to get here. I, I couldn't wait to get here. That's amazing. Which was true. Yeah. Okay? But I don't run it for Colin. You know what I mean? It's a bit far. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been living in your new place? Uh, nine months. Nine months. And uh, that's going well. That's brilliant. That's good. That's great. Uh, yeah. Best thing that ever happened to me. Yeah. Uh, so that's great. Has the grass market played a role at oh, all? Aye. In... Oh, aye. Aye. Oh, aye. I mean, a, a while back I was stuck with Ken. I was getting, uh, when I first moved in, I was getting the bills and all that, and I was getting all mixed up, but having to do this and having to do that. And they helped me, Gillian and all that, helped me right. that way and with the benefit that's stuff. Really good. So you access the benefit service in the grass market? Aye, right? oh, aye, aye. Yeah. aye, very helpful. That's great, John. Great, That's really good. Brilliant. Well, I'm really pleased. I love the quality of your work. And oh. what uh, I think is really important to point out for our listeners at home that um, John uh, made a beautiful, he does really beautiful uh, bird drawings right. um, oh. pencil. And uh, we auctioned one off at our Burn Supper uh, in 2018, and how much did it reach? Uh, 210 pounds, I think. 210 pounds, oh, that was amazing, yeah, yeah. Aye, so uh, that, that was absolutely one. beautiful. I need to do another one for the Burnt Supper this aye, year. Aye, yeah, aye. absolutely brilliant. John's work is, is beautiful, and a lot of the uh, pyrography team use tracing, yeah. um, but John does a lot of stuff freehand, because yeah, he's aye. obviously a very skilled artist. And, uh, oh, it's just a hobby. Well, it's great, it's great having someone of your talents oh, in aye. the team, it really is, and Tommy talks about it a lot. Aye, it's absolutely aye. brilliant. So thanks a lot, John. Okay, Appreciate it, and thanks for talking today. Yeah. Cheers. John there, finishing off a little piece there about the woodwork uh, shop we have in the Grass Market Community Project, where we recycle, we upcycle church pews and other abandoned uh, furniture or wood and turn them into beautiful uh, furniture. Um, and like Tommy says, it's much more it's much more about transforming lives than transforming that wood uh, into lovely furniture. Um, and the way that is funded is by selling that furniture. So if you know of anyone or if you're interested in purchasing from the uh, uh, woodwork shop, come and have a chat with Tommy. And, uh, you know, you can see the, uh, the incredible quality of the stuff that we produce. And know this, that uh, every piece of furniture that you purchase from us or commission us to make for you um, really does transform lives. And uh, not just in terms of helping people get jobs or, you know, many of our members in the past have gone on to self-employment uh, working with wood and in art. Um, it's, it's, it's deeper than that. It's much more about people feeling connected and a sense of belonging and having purpose and meaning in their lives. And uh, what better way to do that than, um, you know, making something beautiful uh, at the same time and working with natural products and natural materials. So it's a fantastic uh, uh, social enterprise, our oldest um, social enterprise. So um, many people listening might uh, not know a huge amount about the Grass Market Community Project, its history, how it came into being, um, what it's all about. And who better to tell us than the Reverend Dr Richard Fraser, who is the Minister of Greyfriars Kirk, and uh, chair of our board. So I was lucky enough to catch up with uh, Richard and ask him a few questions about the history of the project on the, one of the days the, as part of his daily routine, walking his dog, Guinness, in the Hermitage Bray on Blackford Hill. So um, yes, this is Richard and, and I, very early morning, uh, um, chatting about the history of the project. 
Enjoy. So I'm here with uh, Dr. Reverend Dr. Richard Fraser, a wonderful chair. And um, Richard, uh, the best time to catch Richard is um, walking the dog um, in the Hermitage Bray. Um, and so here we are, and it's a lovely, peaceful Thursday morning at 8 o'clock. And I'm going to ask Richard a couple of questions about... Um, just a bit of the history, Richard, of the project and how it got started, if you wouldn't mind just telling... Uh, there would be some people listening to this podcast who know nothing or very little about the GCP and its history, so if you wouldn't mind just giving yeah. us a bit of insight, that would be fantastic. Absolutely, Johnny. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, people wonder, where did it all start? And I think there are different sort of key moments that you can d- identify from uh, two sisters the Reed sisters, who are members of Greyfriars, who started a soup kitchen about 35 years ago, supporting some of the uh, traditionally homeless community that inhabited the grass market. Or you can go back even further to the uh, the original Greyfriars, the Franciscan friars who were, who like St Francis, took the vows of poverty and lived alongside the poorest in their communities, serving them. So there's a long tradition of support for the most vulnerable and for the homeless and for the poor in this part of Edinburgh associated with Greyfriars Kirk. So, um, yeah, and the, uh, so from that initial kind of inspiration and, and, and vision, if you like, how did it actually physically get started? Tell us a couple of bits of the sort of nuts and bolts of actually getting the project off the ground. Right. Yeah, well, that's been uh, a, a big part of my work as minister at Grey Fires over the last 15 years, nearly 16 years now. And we had a soup kitchen in a very run-down building called the Grey Fires Kirk House. And uh, the building was in need of a huge amount of refurbishment. And and one of the things that I came to Grey Fires with was a vision about uh, what I think has come to be known as asset-based community development, which is this idea that People, even if they're down on their luck, even if they're, they've been homeless, they've got mental health problems, they're struggling with addiction, there's uh, a whole variety of different issues that people face. There's also capacity, energy, entrepreneurial flair, uh, love of life that you can tap into. And I think what we did was I recognised that I didn't have all the skills or or the abilities to do anything, but I knew that there were people around who, even although they had had difficulties, could do things to make things work and could make a success of their lives and a success of of our ambition. So we started, instead of just doing a soup kitchen, handing out soup, we started teaching people how to cook, recognising that uh, food and nutrition and good eating and cooking and working together in a communal way is a, is a really positive experience for people. And we had a wonderful moment early on, the first lot of cooking classes we, we undertook, where a young chap came to me and said, you know, uh, that's the first time I've been praised for anything that I've done for as long as I can remember. And I thought, gosh, that's a real, really wonderful thing to hear, that someone who had had difficulties and challenges in their life was suddenly being pr- praised for the meal that he'd cooked for his for his friends so that was one of the things that we started and you know catering and cooking and good nutrition has become a very central theme within the grass market community project the other one was I had this idea that uh, discarded pews church pews a lot of churches getting rid of their pews to make their buildings more flexible. But there's beautiful timber. So even long before I came to Grey Fires, I started collecting old church pews. And uh, I filled the garage at the manse where I was living. And then a farmer that I knew who'd retired, I asked him, this is 20 odd years ago, would he store some pews in a barn he wasn't using? And he said yes, but I think he thought for 
for two or three months. <laughs> but it's now 20 years and he's wow. still storing them. And the idea was that he had these beautiful discarded bits of furniture and these beautiful discarded people. And you could put them together and create something beautiful. And that's what we do. Oh, that's fantastic. And uh, yeah, clearly it's grown enormously. Um, in, in the four or five years that I've been involved, I've seen so much happen, and you've seen even more happen. If it, if that, if it started really as yeah. a sort of dream 20 years ago, yeah. what do you think, just to sort of finish um, this little bit, if you like, of the podcast, I would really appreciate it if you just, just share with us what you think is essential going forward. Would you, as, a, as the person that's been here right from the start... And hopefully for us, okay. uh, with us for many more years to come. But what, yeah. what was, what's the vital ingredient or vital thing we mustn't lose sight of if we're to continue supporting the most vulnerable? Well, I, th I, think, I think a lot of it is who, who owns this community project? And the answer is, it's our members. The answer is that what we're doing is, yes, we're, we're running businesses, social businesses. We're trying to generate revenue so that we can be as autonomous as we can possibly be, not relying on funders being pushed around or finding our funding being cut. So the social enterprise thing is really important, but what's also absolutely fundamental is this idea that we are building on the assets of our members. We're building on their willingness to feel a sense of ownership, their understanding that this project is for them, that it's our community, it's not us doing things to people, it's doing things together and having a lot of fun and creating community and looking out for one another. And one of the most wonderful things that we've started to do a few times recently when we maybe lose one of our members is to have a little service in Greyfriars where the community comes together to grieve, comes together to remember. And these are really special moments because a lot of the members that we have, you know, they don't necessarily think that church is for them. But in that context, you, you just feel this extraordinary upwelling of love and care and community. And for me, it's just profoundly humbling and absolutely wonderful. And I feel so honoured and privileged to have a little part to play in creating that. So... Uh, for me, it's just the most inspiring uh, thing that I think I've ever been involved with. Thank you, Richard. That's absolutely brilliant. And what an amazing setting to hear your, uh, your thoughts with the stream and in the woodlands and the birds singing. And mm. It's absolutely lovely. Thank you ever so much for sharing that with us. It's a pleasure. <laughs> pleasure, Johnny. Richard Fraser there giving us a, a potted history of the project and uh, his uh, vision for the future of the project and how he feels about it now. So uh, that was very kind of Richard to share his the thoughts with us and uh, um, on that cold uh, January morning on the, in the Hermitage and Blackford Hill. So we are always looking at new projects, new activities, uh, new partnerships at the Grass Market Community Project. But one activity that has pretty much been here from the beginning, even when we were uh, primarily a soup kitchen service and we didn't have our wonderful uh, building, the Grass Market Centre, is music. And uh, music for all it's certainly been here the best part of five, six years as a mainstay of uh, an activity we run every week, free, open to everyone. You don't have to be a, a musician uh, or, or have a particular instrument. Just just be interested in, in making music and having fun. And it's a fantastic group. And I often hear it through the walls of my office. Um, and it just they just sound like they're having a really good time and being very creative. And we've had people write their own music. Uh, which the rest of the group have joined in. We've had people just come along and uh, sing and uh, play percussion. But um, best if I let uh, Akin, who runs our guitar uh, lessons and our music group, tell you more about it. So I got a quick chat with Akin uh, the other day.
So, guys, uh, I'm really d- delighted to have with me Akin Fatumbi, who uh, runs our music group on a Wednesday uh, um, and our guitar lessons on a Friday. And I thought this would be a perfect opportunity just to get a little bit from Akin about the purpose of those groups, who should come along, uh, and um, just generally what goes on in those groups. Thanks very much, Johnny. Um, the purpose of the music group really is just to enable people to enjoy music music making if they wish along with other like-minded individuals it's a very open group and it's really not about having experience of playing a musical instrument or being familiar with musical theory or anything along those lines it's about liking music liking making music even sharing your favorite music in the company of like-minded people the guitar group to be honest is a little bit more specific is specifically about guitar guitar playing and development and instruction so ideally that would be a group for people who want to improve or develop their guitar playing yeah great excellent and the way i understand that the, the the music for all group on a, on a wednesday at two o'clock is open to anyone anyone any member and anyone can become a member and um and anyone like you say don't have to have any experience of playing an instrument they can just come along and join in and uh i um but the guitar the idea is that it's open each term for a couple of weeks and then it sort of closes down a little bit so that the people can really be at the same level as they work for progress absolutely johnny that's exactly yeah. it's, it's to ensure that people are developing and that they're coming in at the same level and it's not unfortunately interrupted by having perhaps too many people coming in at different times yeah. at different levels and different yeah. maybe different it desires sense. it makes sense because you know if people are serious about learning the guitar then they want to be roughly at the same level and work through together otherwise like you say it'd be very difficult for, for you to both teach that's yeah. that's excellent i have heard uh, this for the listeners at home i have heard the music group many times through the walls uh, and it sounds great. What what sounds great is they're like having a lot of fun, and and there's some actually some very talented musicians. There are some very that contribute, talented people, but yeah. those with who maybe don't actually play an instrument still really enjoy participating and still contribute. A bit of percussion, bit of singing, absolutely, and they love it. They absolutely love it. And you hear a sure. lot of laughter and a lot of fun being had. And you've also done a couple of concerts in in the project, haven't you? We years? have, and we've also been fortunate enough to do some concerts that were actually out with the project, inside the project. By which I mean by agencies perhaps using the yeah. project services or yeah. sort of using it as a so yeah. we've been really fortunate that way. That's excellent. And Akin, I don't know, it, um, it might, might be quite nice for the listeners just to hear a little one a, a bit about your background and your training and how, what makes you suitable for running this particular group. Right, ho. Uh, my background is actually I've been a musician for many, many years and I play in bands in and around Edinburgh and indeed around Scotland. Alongside that, I also have the experience of having worked within um, social services, within health and voluntary sector services. So ideally that mixture of music, community engagement yeah. and Ideally, coming from a supportive background and being very interested in that and sharing my own love of music with people yeah. makes me Excellent. helpfully useful to people. Excellent. And I've got to ask this. Do you have a favourite genre, uh, a particular type of music that you have an affinity with? What, what, do you, what sort of music do your bands play? Uh, predominantly, actually, we, we, take, we tend to play a, kind of a form of West African music. Wow. Um, sure. It's quite largely influenced by Senegalese musicians because that's um, where our style originated with that particular band. But with others, like many musicians, I also like to play funk and pop and rock yeah, and yeah, soul yeah. and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So go on then. This is a great opportunity. Give us a plug. When you when does when will we be able to hear your band play? Or when when would someone be able to like find this this? Okay, this in terms name of a band and a venue where you might where right. find you. In terms of a band that people could see that would not be too far from the grass market, um, sometimes the band Samba Sane and Diwan, Samba being the singer, Diwan being the name of the group, plays at Stramash, oh, which yes, is less well. than I think Just 200 meters yeah, 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 from the excellent. grass market. So. Right, okay, so we should look out for that. In, look out for that, yeah. particularly in April. Excellent. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Thanks very much, Johnny. Kim uh, telling us there about the uh, music activities. Uh, I cannot encourage you more uh, to come along if you're, um, you know, if you want to uh, have a, some a really quality experience, uh, enjoy uh, making music with people, or just feeling part of a, a group. You know, it's a it's a fantastic activity, and um, you know, it just seems to be a lot of joy and uh, positivity going on in there. So please come along. Uh, but equally, we're always looking for musicians who do play instruments well to uh, come along and help teach and encourage and play play uh, music in our group. We've done a f- few concerts over the years and they've always been really well received. So um, uh, come along and join the music group. Remember, all of our activities are free and it's a very swift and uh, straightforward process to join the Grass Market Community Project. Drop us a line on info at grassmarket.org if you want more information about that. Okay, so... I managed to get a bit of time in the cafe a couple of days ago and had a really good chat with one of our students who uh, contributes so much to the project. And uh, this is me chatting to Jennifer Early and uh, a few of the members in the cafe just a couple of days ago. 
as well as our social enterprise wood workshop uh, we also have another social enterprise, a cafe, um, um, a very busy cafe, one of the busiest cafes in the grass market. We're a bit quiet just now, which is good, because it gives me a chance to talk to some of the people we've got in the cafe today. And we just so happen to have one of our students. So the Grass Market Community Project is very fortunate to have uh, the support of uh, Edinburgh University students, Robert Gordon Aberdeen uh, uh, from Aberdeen University students, social work students, um, and uh, Jennifer Early is here, joined the team a week ago? Two weeks ago Two now. weeks ago. Yes. yes. <laughs> and uh, how time flies. I know. And uh, um, you're here for how long, Jennifer? I've got another 10 weeks here. Right, okay. Yeah. Tell us a bit about the course that you're on. Uh, so I'm studying community education, um, yeah. and so I'm in my third year just now, second placement. Right, um, the best placement you've had, of course. So far. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a bit about what sort of stuff uh, uh, that you're hoping to do with the project. Um, I'm just hoping to get to know uh, and understand what a social enterprise is, um, and get to know the people who come along, the members who attend. Um, the centre and uh, and what you do along here and Brilliant. hopefully add to it. <laughs> yeah, oh totally. Because uh, one of the things that we like having, uh, why one of the main reasons that we like having students is that they do add to, they do add to what we can do, obviously, because they deliver or co-deliver activities, but also they ask questions. People like you ask annoying questions. <laughs> uh, ask really good questions, and it helps us look at what we do and how we do it. And otherwise, we might just get stuck in the habits of just doing things the same way. Yeah, it's good. Students are good for constantly questioning, and they also help people like me and uh, some of the team to relate what we do to a bit of the sort of theory behind why we do it and how it relates to other agencies and organisations and, you know, up and coming studies and research and that sort of stuff. So hopefully you'll be contributing a bit to, a bit of that. I am hoping, well. yes, yes. 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 <laughs> so you've been here two weeks. First impressions? Uh, great, absolutely great. The people who come along here and the staff, the members, everybody's lovely, welcome in. The uh, groups that you have here are all amazing. I've been involved in nearly all of them now. And, uh, and I have to say I'm very impressed with all of them. And yeah, good. it's great stuff that you are doing here. Okay, well, perhaps as you're here uh, um, and we've got a few members sitting in the cafe relaxing who, who thought they'd avoid being on this podcast, you could introduce them to us. Of course. If you know who they are. Yes. And um, they could say a few words. Okay, so we have James here. James was featured in our last podcast uh, um, and we talked very eloquently about the creative writing and the uh, um, uh, book group. Anything you want to add, James, to what you've, been, what you've been up to in the last few weeks? What about future plans in the summer, in June? Anything happening then? Um, nothing really comes... Oh, well, I'm sure there, there is something involved. Uh, yeah, there is uh, the West Highland... There is the West Highland Way. The that West has, Highland Way? Oh, yes, wow. indeed. Wow, tell us a bit about that. Uh, it's a fair old walk, 100 miles or so, uh, running from... Um, um, running? Um, wow. Running. <laughs> Starting in uh, Melgai and ending up in, I believe, Fort William. Brilliant. Uh, and it's a, a six-day venture uh, that the Grass Market Community Project are putting on. Great. And I believe there's about 10 or 12 people I who believe are... there's someone who's actually going to go on the walk as well as yourself uh, here with us today as well. Perhaps Indeed. Perhaps could say a few words. A Passover. Lee. Hello there. So this is Lee, Lee Holland, who's been coming to the project. How long have you been coming to the project for, Lee? A year. A year. And tell us a bit about your involvement with the West Island Way. How come you're going to go on this, this, this epic 100-mile walk? Well, it's a ventures for everybody. It's a great achievement. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's good for your legs and your arms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it certainly is. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it's, uh, it's going to be a brilliant experience. Yeah, good. You, you've had some residential experience before in the project, Yes, I you? have. Would I've you mind telling Dark, us a bit about... I've been to Darkow, I've been to... Uh, uh, camus. Yeah. And it's What's Camus? Camus is like a, it's just a, like a little island. Right. And it's beautiful sights. Beautiful. Rock, right, rock Great. climbing and abseiling and canoeing. and Yeah, it's brilliant adventures. Good. Excellent. Old um, vegetarian. <laughs> and would you like to introduce this man that's sitting to your right? This is Andy who sits next to me who comes to the project. Would you like to say a few words? Yes, thank you. <laughs> So, oh, uh, Andrew, how long have you been coming to the project? Man? I don't rightly know. I think it's been four years. Four years? That's almost as long as me. That's right, longer and, than uh, me. I, I love it. Uh, 
I'm doing IT this morning. Great. Who's and, that with? And Jennifer. Right. Taking that. Brilliant. And I have my lunch at one o'clock. And yeah. Uh, you used to be quite heavily involved in the in the yeah, lunches, didn't yeah, you? I yeah, was, yeah, I was in to... the kitchen at one time. Yeah, then, yeah. Uh, for quite a, for a number of years, were you know. Never on uh, home oxygen, so it's too right. Okay. Dodgy more for difficult. The, yeah. Working in that kind of environment. But you're certainly uh, involved in quite a few things. You're involved in the IT. I'm what else? Quite, well, I come here every day of the week. Every day. Monday what? to Friday. What is it you like about the place so much, Andrew? I love the, the environment. I love the atmosphere and the. It's great for passing my time. I enjoy it. Yeah, good. I'll that's, pass it over. That's great. Thanks very much, Andrew. Yeah, and thanks very much, everybody, for uh, giving a little bit to the Grass Cuttings podcast. That wraps it up for episode two of Grass Cuttings. Thank you ever so much for listening. Um, thanks to Lee, uh, Rory, Tommy, John, the guys in the cafe, James, Andrew, Jennifer, Lee again, and uh, for Akin for telling us about the music. Great thanks to Richard Fraser for spending some time with us and also thanks to Tomash who, um, who, who helps us put this podcast together. He's a sound engineer and a wonderful guy that's been supporting us in the, this project. So thanks to him. And um, I hope you enjoyed this uh, month's episode. I hope you'll join us in episode three. If you want to support the project in any way by volunteering, get in touch, uh, info at grassmarket.org. If you want to donate any uh, resources or funding to the project, please get in touch. Although we have very successful social enterprises, we still rely on uh, donations and uh, grant support for uh, a proportion of our programs and activities. So please do get in touch. Uh, we're very grateful to Better Futures Fund um, from Hub Southeast, for who fund our apprenticeship scheme. And as you heard uh, in this uh, podcast, um, the benefit to those individuals is massive um, and uh, it's very much appreciated. So, um, yeah, if you want to join hub southeast in supporting the project then please come and speak to us at info at grassmarket.org or you can get us on social media uh twitter is at gcp underscore edinburgh uh, or on facebook grass market community project um and um yeah just thank you again for listening and uh, please do email in if you've got any thoughts on the podcast any feedback or any suggestions uh, or if you really desperately want to appear on the podcast please please get in touch uh, info at grassmarket.org um, or you can call us on 0131 225 3626 thanks again for listening bye bye <laughs>